Seven months ago, we started to take up London. Here's the progress we've made. Welcome back to McKinley. We've been working really hard trying to get this station back into good shape. Um, it's coming on really well and as you can see with a sort of just a general vista of this we've done an awful lot of stuff and I'm going to just talk you through each of those areas in some details with the help of Andy who's been doing most of the modelling in London. Structurally we basically had some major works to do to take away the track that went round underneath here with this track that's behind here and take it through to the other layout. That's now been done and we've got a dedicated video taking you around all those. The next thing that we had to do was upgrade all the point motors, upgrade all the electrical wiring, just check it's all in good shape, add a stack of uncouplers for our wagon and freight movement stuff and also add in something like 30 to, 30 to 40 RFID sensors so that we could bring London up to the way we operate the extension being Sheffield, Halifax and Wakefield. The two areas of track work we wanted to upgrade was the goods facility in front here of London and then the track work around the engine shed which we knew was faulty and Andy's going to take you through that together with the buildings that he's been doing for that area in a minute. Once we've got the track work down the real challenge that I was faced with was getting a back scene for London. I saw a photograph which confirmed my thinking of Nelson's column and it was a drone picture from behind Nelson's column and it showed what London looked like from his stone view, his eyes. And he, when you put Nelson's column onto this model railway in 00, it's 67 centimetres above the baseball which happens to be roughly my eyesight and it's this kind of sort of sky view of London. The back scene here is something like eight and a half to nine metres of back scene and it took us some time to find somebody that had a decent enough back scene. You don't need the quality what you need is the length or the scale of it and then we had to go through and sort of edit out every building we could that was relatively modern and try and get it back to looking like something it would have been in the 50s and 60s. The other challenge we faced was that we have vertical walls at one point and we have sloping walls along this bit here. And it's not intuitively obvious what you do but what we chose to do in the end was to stretch the slopey wall pieces by about 40% so they married up with the vertical pieces and as you can see there was a real challenge here with these skyscrapers which were built in those times. We printed it onto this thick uh, vinyl it's sort of almost like sort of really hard bin liner so it's very tough it doesn't stretch and we cut it into metre sections so we could get it up there with wallpaper paste and it's a great thing, it adds depth to this room and what you can see is you've got all the wonderful sights of London so if we're walking through this a minute you've got these skyscrapers or these tower blocks and these things which incidentally in the real life the real Paddington is just off screen here on the left and this is our version of it I suppose. We then go around, the post office tower was built in that time we had to as a last minute edit take off the words BT tower which were in purple around the top we nearly got to first print with that on. We then went around decimating modern building after modern building. We left centre point in over there. We then go on to St Paul's and then on to past the St James's Park and Hyde Park. You've got buildings like the, the uh, Houses of Parliament and the Shell Centre on the South Bank was there at a very early stage. And so we go all around and then we have this iconic picture on that rear wall as you walk into the room of Battersea Power Station. So, and that was a surprise, we didn't intend that to be, but our photographer um, or our editor um, basically came up with that idea and that was brilliant. And then we decided to be a bit, sort of did a little bit of self-deprecation by adding in Godzilla, but trying to find the right photographs 
of helicopters that were appropriate for that time proved to be a challenge. In the end, we chose the Airfix models and we stuck them on because if Airfix, given it, that's a model world and this is a model world, if that's the colour they were when they were produced in the 60s, it must be right because Airfix did it, didn't it? Yep. So we got all this up and then that allowed us to basically get on with finishing off all the testing, all the hardware checks, all the points throwing and closing, all the occupancy sensors working, all the RFID sensors and they're everywhere. And I'm going to take you through the detail of this because we've really gone to town with our um, every movement has a purpose in London. But the really key thing for us is getting this finished off, this station completed visually. You will remember from the earlier videos that we had the skeletal structure of the station canopy. Um, Andy has added all of this beautiful detail to it and been working with the vaccine. So I'm going to hand over to him now to take you through the sort of the thinkings and the workings he's been going through to try and get this effect. Rebuilding London was a bit of a challenge. What you see here has come after many, many hours of painstaking work. The main feature is the canopy. Obviously, it's quite large, which makes it a delicate operation. But what we had originally was just the skeletal form. Just to remind you, if you haven't watched any videos before, if there's anybody out there like that, this is what we had. Simple arch format and wire rodding going through and we had to do something with it. So the idea was to create a canopy that enabled us to have visual aspect into the tracks so we could see the comings and goings of all the, the trains. <coughs> That's a problem. So what we came up with was having a a sort of perspex canopy made out of acetate sheet across the top here with the corrugation down the side but the access points so we could peer in like an old sort of tool manual was left blank so the, the eye sort of assumes you can see in it and it's kind of forgiving you get used to that and it enables us to have visual access though now it's actually in place we're rethinking slightly that maybe the visual access isn't quite enough so we may have to just tweak it a little bit here and there but more of that later. When you, what you see here, of course, isn't what we started with. Because the geometry of the whole thing has had to change, because we brought the back scene at the far corner here, we brought it forward, which means there's less room. And if you look carefully, if you can see here, the canopy sits on a set of upturned screws, which have grew, as are screwed through the bottom of the baseboard. That anchors it in, but it doesn't quite marry up, so we've got to change that. We've re rebuilt the corner because, of course, the geometry change with the tracks behind. That means we've had to bring this forward. And we found, when we put it in only a few days ago for this rough placement, we found that we didn't have enough room for it. So we're in the process of cutting holes in the back, in the back screen here, out of the station building, just to facilitate a little bit more depth. And that, of course, has had this knock-on effect all the way along, so the back scene is going to have to be, uh, be moved slightly and altered. But that's an ongoing thing for another week or so. Aside from that, you'll see placement buildings. These aren't going to be the final ones, obviously, but they enable us to assess the idea of how big the structure would be, volume, mass of the buildings, and what would work. And we started off with small foam board mock-ups. And from that, we get an idea of roughly what will look good, what will look to scale, and make a realistic form in four millimeters at a foot. We've used Walther's kits as a basis, and I've spent a few hours, happy hours, I might say, kit bashing and changing and these are so they've just gone on the layout and we realize they're not quite right they're going to have to be tweaked a little bit chop a bit here add a bit there turn it upside down whatever it'll all be a bit of fun to do and then we can then make sure we have everything in the proper scale and marry it up with what's going to follow with our woods tobacco store our balance cold store and this is going to be a port store my personal favorite and also a bonded warehouse. So that's the progress we've made so far from the building format. 
when I said a moment ago about moving the back scene, obviously I don't mean we're going to bring, bring the whole wall forward. We're referring to the, the buildings at the back here, which are simply placed in front. They're not fixed, they just stand there. Um, and it's those that can move forward and move backwards and giving us that flexibility of changing the depth to accommodate the new geometry of the canopy itself. Perhaps the most notable aspect was the tracery at the front here for the, the screens, all done with laser cut MDF. And then we utilised the same technology for laser cut MDF for the web trusses, all the way supporting the glazing and in the arches that go on the original skeletal form. The intention is to have lighting, not just on the platforms, but throughout the canopy, in the engine shed, signal box, and possibly in some of the industrial areas as well. That's future work. Away from the canopy end, we move down here to the engine shed. Now on the old layout, the track geometry was slightly different. We've done a little bit of fiddling to make it work. And that meant the old engine shed that we had didn't fit. So we made the executive decision to come up with something new, something different. And what we've used, if you've come across them, I'm sure you have uh, excellent little kits, L-Cut Creative. We took one of their North Light engine shed kits. In fact, we took two of them and then a few bits more, which you can buy separately. And we created something that actually fits exactly to the geometry of the track that we've got, which means actually there's a little kink in it just so that it all fits nicely and we get adequate clearance for the locomotives going through the entrance. Didn't quite get that right the first time, sorry, that was my fault, but we got it right now. Still some work to do, we haven't yet weathered the roof, that's coming later on, my colleague Ivana will work her particular brand of magic on that. You might also notice here we've got the signal box. This is quite a recent addition to, the, to our world, um, Key Model Worlds uh, through Hornby magazine, they produced this and we thought it's a nice big ugly thing which would fit in beautifully in this position. It's a great little kit, fits in, looks absolutely the part. When we put it together, it went beautifully, fitted together but nicely, but we discovered on a layout like this that gets an awful lot of use and a lot of people around, we needed something that was going to be a little stronger than the, the, the original thing. So we've put in brass uh, reinforcements to support the roof just in here. And so we've got everything here. Hopefully, according to David's law, it has to be hoover proof. So that's the point. Originally, it was very, very susceptible to damage. So that's now hopefully going to be wonderfully strong and will last for many, many years. Looking elsewhere in the engine shed area, not everything has been replaced. The original coaling stage is still there. It's in the process of having some work done and there's a more, lot more to do. The diesel refueling point, with a little help from Batman, has been installed. Again, more work to do. It's all got to be made really mucky and icky and that will come in due course. And here, the turntable. Obviously, it's the original one, all ready to go, but it's all been completely redone, titivated, all the motors have been changed, oiled, sorted, and it's now in, hopefully, brilliant working order, so it's all ready to go. So that's really the progress we've made so far, and next time you see it, hopefully this will all be weathered up, it will all have its grimy um, atmosphere installed, and it will be something to match what we've done over there. So that's London, hope you like it. On a final point, the thing I'm not quite sure about with what we've done on London is for the optics, for the operators being able to see access to their, their wagons and their locomotives. We've got the screens here that will show them what's there, but where we did the cutouts, you have to be quite tall to see down. And we, 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 we're going to end up hiding everything away. And if you have to get to stuff, so accessibility, if we have a broken locomotive, and seeing what the numbers are, without relying on the technology, is a little bit of a worry which I'm not sure we've quite yet sorted out. We've been developing these panels for London. This is uh, the sort of the standard format you will have seen on all our other stations. Um, the one thing that we had to extend was the size of the touch screens here. So we've gone for two touch screens because nobody makes a touch screen that is that kind of size or is bigger than the ones we have already used. 
They can be physically bigger, but the pixel resolution isn't any different. So there's an interesting catch-22. So we added functionality and then needed to add a completely second screen to make London work. So this is all here. I'm not quite sure we've got this completely right at this stage. I need to hide all this cable and equipment here. And if we come down and look at the lower levels down here, we have added a fascia panel along London so that we can put the uncouplers in place. But what we haven't yet sorted out is where do we put the pockets for the throttles and where do the throttles plug in with these um, UP5s. So there's some basic housework we still have to do to get London polished, but it's coming on really well. And one of the things that we are doing at the same time as doing all this decorative and scenic uh, modeling is testing it for operational purposes. So we're compressing what we did out on the extension with places like Wakefield and Sheffield where we were uh, testing out did RFID, did we have it in the right places, did it all work. With London we just decided to get on with doing the scenic on top of testing the layout which I'm sure will give us some interesting headaches but Time is of the essence and we need to get London finished and then move on to Manchester so that we can have two stations in the fray with the other parts and in the other room so we can get on and start playing trains. We'd like to have London complete within the next two months, so that's before Christmas. There's being hopeful. Thanks for watching.